this is a sponsored video because I gotta save up money for my studio. The kind sponsor being Skillshare, the online learning community with over 30,000 classes in probably whatever your little thinker desires to thunk about. Wait, that's not right. Check this out. Skillshare.com or Skillshare app. Look up whatever it is you need help with, and there's a metric many ton of videos available made by teachers, professionals, and other creators. I use it all the time to get some help with my art, but currently I'm looking into the class Real Productivity, How to Build Habits That Last by Thomas Frank. Because, man, could I use some advice on how to balance all my different projects. Skillshare be out here teaching me how to juggle. If it all sounds like something you'd be interested in, I've got a link in the description down below that will give the first 500 people that click two months of Skillshare for free. Thank you, Skillshare, so much again, and now it's draw time. Howdy hey, I'm Ray. We're flexing some design muscles today. I'm gonna take my Magical Girl OCs, these ones here, and I'm gonna redesign them as if they're from other Magical Girl shows that I like. Ready, set, go. It's only appropriate that I start with redesigning them as Tokyo Mew Mew characters since that what they were based on originally. For anyone unfamiliar, Tokyo Mew Mew is a save the earth story about girls being injected with the DNA of endangered animals so they have the instinct to fight to survive. And also they're all named after food for some reason. The magical girls in Tokyo Mew Mew have very distinct monochromatic color schemes for each individual girl and some simplistic animal appendages. They're designed to be cute, not realistic. They also have very cohesive outfits with each other. They all have matching seams and garters and chokers and cute little arm puffs. The hardest part was just picking one solid color for each of my kids and then matching it to their outfit's color scheme. And I'm about to start talking about my characters in a familiar tone because I've talked about them on YouTube before, so I'm assuming that at least a handful of you recognize them. If you get lost, uh... You could watch the other two videos I have, or Tough Nuts. Katsumi, of course, was originally based on a cat. In her first designs, it was an orange cat, but in her design right now, her color scheme is predominantly white and gray. Because of that, in her Mew Mew design, I wanted to give her a white tail and ears, but having so much white with her animal bits and her outfit, I thought just bled together too much. So for the endangered animal that she merged with, I just picked the Iremote Wildcat. I hope I'm saying that right. It's the same cat that Tokyo Mew Mew's main character Ichigo is based on, and the black ears and tail popped more against the white and gray. Even though the actual Iremote wild cat isn't black, it's like brown, but in the manga, they, they give her the black ears, so we're going with that. Ichigo also gave me an excuse to change the eye and hair color of the rest of my characters to match their color scheme. I think Mew Ichigo is the only character with eyes and hair color that change from her civilian form to her hero form to become more vibrant, but every other character on her team already has unnaturally colored hair. All of Katsumi's friends have natural hair and eye colors, which wouldn't be as fun without finessing Ichigo's ability. As a result, I gave Katsumi more pinkish gray hair and I gave her pink eyes. Finally, of course she needed a superhero name based on food, so here's Katsumi as Mew Lychee. Yu, in her original design, was based on a mouse. So for her Mew Mew form, we went with the mouse. We went with the endangered jumping mouse. I like Yu's color scheme being pink in her usual design, so I kept that for her Tokyo Mew Mew one. Technically, I should have made her hair a shade of pink as well, but I'm, I'm too attached to it being gray. <laughs> Actually, with all of these characters, I ended up going off model of Tokyo Mew Mew canon and giving them all like, uh, a more monochromatic black and white theme, kind of, with their hair and with their animal bits, and then just making their outfits the vibrant colors. I don't remember how I justified this in my head, I just know when I was drawing it, I thought the change suited Katsumi's group dynamic for reasons. <laughs> anyway, this is only the second design I've drawn so far, but I think Yu's was my favorite Mew Mew to make for sure. I'm just, I don't know, I'm really happy with her dress, I think it's cute. For her hero name, I dubbed you as Mew Cheese because Mouse, really, she should have had a yellow color scheme to go with her name instead of pink, but official Mew Mew character Mint isn't exactly a minty shade of green. Also, pink cheese is a thing anyway, Google said so. Uh, simultaneously kind of terrified of what it might taste like and kind of overwhelmed by the desire to eat it. Azumi, of course, had to be a bunny. She's always been a bunny. She's gonna stay a bunny. But I couldn't pass up the chance to make her a Playboy bunny. Especially because there's literally a chapter in Tokyo Mew Mew where they all dress up as Playboy bunnies, and it's just too on brand for Azumi. The endangered animal that she was merged with is a European hare, and I went with a yellow color for her scheme since her actual design is yellow as well. Same logic I had with you, just 
keeping some familiarity. I was kind of struggling to think up a hero name for her. I did want to go with the yellow food, and official Tokyo Mimio characters have both English and Japanese food names, but a lot of the yellow foods either had basically the same name in both languages, or it wouldn't have really made a cool name. Like, like, okay, real toss up between Mew Pineapple and Mew Pineapple. I ended up going with Mew Momo because Momo is Japanese for peach and peaches are kinda yellow. Emmy gave me problems. <laughs> I wanted to make their outfit green at first and because their original design is based on a fox, I wanted their endangered animal to be a fox, but the, the reddish orange fox ears and green outfit were way too far from anything that would have been Tokyo Mew Mew canon, or at least I thought so. So I tried to make the whole outfit orange so it would be monochromatic and then I remembered that I was banking on the green because I was really excited to make Emmy's name Mew Matcha. <laughs> and trying to pick an orange food gave me the same problems that I just had with the Zumi where both Mew Orange and Mew Orangey sound kinda lame. So I had to dig back a bit. Emmy's first ever design was based on a generic fox but the second one was based on a silver fox. So back to a green outfit, swap the orange hair for silver, slap Darwin Fox DNA on this NB. Boom, Mew Matcha. Lastly, Hukuro in her first design was based on a raven, and then her second was a snowy owl, and now she's just generally a bird. But for her Mew Mew form, I based her on the endangered long-eared owl, which from my brief research is only kind of considered endangered, but semantic semantics. Actually, if you just Google blank animal endangered and briefly glance at the search results, it almost looks like everything is endangered, but that's my fault for not spending more than five seconds on my animal research. Hukuro's colors gave me the most trouble because I couldn't decide what I wanted for her hair and animal bits. I think I'm the least happy with her design, but I definitely don't hate it. The simple wings were fun to design, and I dubbed the Mew Blueberry. So there we go, uh, magical girls, a la Mew Mew. The next anime I'm gonna draw them in, I wouldn't say has inspired me at all. I'd call it an elaborate shitpost. Because now I'm drawing them as if they were from Magical Girl's site. You know, the anime that's known for being a cheap torture porn ripoff of Madoka Magica. Anyone who says that, fair assessment. I started watching the show because I heard it was awful, and I definitely thought it was bad. But somewhere towards the middle end, I realized that I thought the magic system was like a little bit cool and more than anything, I was enjoying the experience. Definitely for the wrong reasons, but I like watching shitty live action horror movies, so who am I to turn down perfectly good bad content? I will graciously eat my meal. For starters, I put all my characters in the school uniform that the two main characters in Magical Girl Sight wear. And because Yu is kind of the outlier in their group anyway, I gave her the uniform that the side characters that show up partway through wear. In Magical Girl Sight, they don't get Magical Girl outfits, they just get a weapon called a stick that they carry around with them 24-7. It has one particular power and their hair gets a gradient color along with the symbol showing up in their eyes and on their hand when they use their stick. Making sticks for all of my characters was where the fun was at, because the stick's power doesn't have to be obvious, so I really wanted to try and get creative. I gave Katsumi a key that can unlock anything, so things with physical locks like a car door or a treasure chest, or things with a digital lock like bypassing a phone password. I thought since she acts as team leader, it made sense for her to have something that lent well to taking charge and, and taking direction. Meanwhile, Yu gets a much more passive stick. It's a blanket that can turn you invisible if you hide inside of it. Whoa! My dick fell off! Also, just, Side note, I liked you being the only character with bright colors amongst the rest of them. It seemed like cute symbolism in an otherwise typically nasty setting that is Magical Girl Sight. As for their little magical symbols, Katsumi gets this weird four-pointed flower that I've used as quote-unquote my shape TM since middle school, and you get a Mickey Mouse head for presumably obvious reasons. I put Emmy in the boys uniform from the main school in the show because Emmy's just not comfortable in skirts, and I think they look pretty fantastic in it, honestly. I'm a fan of Emmy in the, the shorts and the big ol' shoes. I was really proud of my idea for Emmy's stick. I wanted something blunt because I feel like out of all my characters, Emmy was the most likely to misuse their stick and try and just swing it at people. So I gave them a wrench. One of the ones that has the little, the little spinny bit to move the bottom jaw of the wrench so you can like adjust the grip. I don't know the technical terms. But 
As a magical stick, if Emmy aims the wrench at someone and adjusts the grip, it can speed their body up or slow it down. I figured this would be effective to disorient enemies because their brain's processing speed wouldn't speed up or slow down with their body. So Emmy could trick someone into running into a wall because they couldn't think to stop or to halt them in their tracks and make an escape. Nice little chaotic weapon that's also heavy enough to hit somebody with. Finally, Emmy's symbol is just a, I believe it's a null sign. I just thought it was fitting. Azumi sucked to draw here because I couldn't decide how I wanted to color the, the sweater that she had on over her uniform. I just went with black because I thought it was the easiest way to, to make it look good in the grand scheme of the whole picture, even though she so isn't a goth bitch, but okay, whatever. Her stick is the one that I'm also the least proud of. I was I was least proud of Tokyo Mew Mew Hukuro and, and Magical Girl Side Izumi. I, they can't all be winners, these drawings take too long. Her stick is a mirror that acts like a counter shield against magical attacks. So she can divert whatever the effects were back onto the user. Like if Emmy tried to use their wrench to speed Izumi up, then with the mirror, Izumi could make Emmy speed themselves up instead. A mirror was just an easy association for Izumi cause she's like slightly th the littlest bit vain. For her symbol, I just chose a music note because I didn't want to pick her animal again like I had with you and I didn't remember any of the girls in the anime having a music note, so there. So then with Hukuro, I did the same thing with her original designs weapon and said, I like irony, so let's give the blind girl a sight-based weapon. Hukuro's symbol is a feather because bird, obvious choice, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but her stick is a digital camera. Just like the kaleidoscope in her usual design, I think the weapon is super overpowered, but evened out by the fact that Hukuro has to be careful with it. So anyone that she takes a picture of will become trapped inside of a space that's like kind of in the film card, but not really. It's a space and we're assuming it's the film card until she physically ejects the film card and then breaks it open, releasing the person back into the real world and then making her have to go and buy a new film card. She could capture anyone if she's confident she's not going to accidentally trap her friends inside with her target, and her ammo is limited by her wallet. And frankly, in this universe where using your stick literally drains your life force, why on earth would anyone offer to use it for her? Now, I've officially drawn AU fan art of my OCs in a show that I, I enjoy watching, but not because I think it's great. <laughs> Next, let's again put them in a show that I enjoy watching and Sometimes I think it's really not great. <laughs> Katsumi's Crew Miraculous Edition. I hate how much I love this show. It's a drug, I can't give it up. Every time I'm ready to quit, they keep reeling me back in. The balance of good episodes and bad episodes isn't fair. <laughs> okay, maybe Miraculous Ladybug isn't exactly a magical girl show, but it's clearly magical girl inspired. It's close enough, I'm including it. That's the end of the argument. The way that the characters work in the show is you get a Kwame that lets you transform into an animal themed superhero and that Kwame comes with one very specific power that you can use one time before you transform back or at least we're left to assume that when you get more powerful you can use it more times than once but you know that's really not relevant right now. I would have loved to pick a Miraculous for each of my characters based on how I thought their personality would fit using that power, but because we don't have the full array, because we don't know how all of the Zodiac Kwame's powers work, I didn't want to make a premature and clearly forever binding decision. It was just too important. So I gave them the Miraculous that corresponds to the animal that their original design is based on, which is real unfortunate because Emmy would have made a fantastic monarch monkey. So since we're going based on a strict animal inspiration to Kwame ratio, nobody has the ladybug miraculous, but Katsumi has the black cat, you know, the one that canonically is shown all this fucking time to be not as important as the other half of its duo, but that's cool. I'd drawn myself as Cat Noir recently for, for Chatsnia's 2 collab, and in that design, I made the cat ears the top half of a black bow. I liked that a lot, so I'm rehashing it for Cat. This next part's kind of off-brand for Miraculous, but I decided for her suit to have an open back and no sleeves. I just, I thought it looked nice, so I rolled with it. I also put a darker patch of like fabric leather in a V shape around her chest and gave her angled thigh-high boots just for some visual flavor. I almost made the tail her belt like it usually is, but I wanted to draw little metal pockets at her hips and a belt would have obstructed that. 
so I gave her a clip-on tail like Panther has in Persona. Picking her hero name went pretty smoothly. I wanted to use Neko instead of Shot or Cat because she's Japanese, and Japanese for black is Koro. So I slapped them together, Nekoro as her alias. I, I'm sure that pun has been made plenty of times before, but I, I don't know Japanese, guys. I wasn't aware, so I'm, I'm like happy with myself. I think it's cute. It's real cute. Emmy getting the fox was a given, but I liked that they and Katsumi both had staff-like weapons. I like that matching best friend dynamic. I made their hair a little redder the way that Rina Rouge's does and added the little orange gradient, but then I made all of their under hair, is that what we call it? The under hair white. So it would be a really hard contrast instead of another gradient. And then more substantially, instead of turning the fabric that falls off of the fox user's hips into a tail, I turned the tail into a cape. Not because of a problem with hips or anything, I, I just think that Emmy feels really cool wearing a cape. For a hero name, I knew that the word for a female fox was Vixen, which is cool, but it's not a name that Emmy would ever choose. So I went to see if there were any other nicknames for foxes, but I only really found interesting nicknames associated with gender. Apparently, male foxes are either known as dogs, tods, or reynards. And since male nicknames kind of tend to be the ones that we use as generally ambiguous, uh, and Emmy being the, the more masculine non-binary that they are, I figured they'd want to use one of the male names. Using dog as part of the hero name in-universe would be weird because there's already a separate dog Miraculous. Todd on its own also sounds really plain, though I wouldn't put it past Emmy to try and pick an alias like Todd Troublemaker and have Katsumi shoot it down. Raynard, though, I'm always going to associate with StarCraft, so that sounds pretty badass. I considered going with Raynard Rouge as a full name, but that's an awful lot on the jaw, that's a lot of hard consonants, so just Raynard as the hero name is fine. Yu gets the mouse, and I went ham on trying to match her outfit to Katsumi's again like I did in their regular designs. I gave her the same darker V on the chest of the outfit, the open back with the no sleeves, and the, the little like angled thigh boots. Plus I gave her little bows behind her hair buns since Katsumi has a bow, and use a copycat, a copy mouse, you know. I put paw pads on the soles of her feet, uh, shoes, feet, because Katsumi probably has them on her shoes. Though I wanted to make the, the pads a bit more obviously like rat peats, but I was thinking really quickly, I was like on the spot as I'm recording, I didn't want to take too long while recording, I guess. The first thing that came to my mind was making them more obviously rat peats mandated that I had to give them like alonged little toes and I thought that would ruin the simplistic cute charm of the rest of the outfit, so it's just peats. The detail that I like most about this outfit is since you is a baby, I gave her face paint along with her mask. It's kind of hard to see, but she's got a little pink nose with some whiskers. Does the paint come with the transformation or does she rush to put it on herself before each battle? You decide. Picking a name seemed like a bit of a daunting task because in show, the only mouse superhero we've seen went with a name that described the animal and the power. Marinette named herself Multimouse. I didn't know how to name you after the same thing without just picking the same name, but then I found out that a baby mouse is called a pinky. And God, that's, that's, so, <laughs> that's so fucking perfect and cute. Guys, look, here's Pinky. <laughs> Pukuro was a lot of fun. The peacock miraculous is the only bird that we've seen so far. We haven't seen the chicken. I'm gonna be real. I think I can pretty confidently say I would have given Hukuro the, the peacock even if we had seen the chicken miraculous. But you know, whatever. We've seen, we've seen the peacock, it works. First thing I did was turn the peacock's fan weapon into a veil since from what I understand, the, the miraculous user has to pluck out the feathers to attack with anyway, not using it as an actual fan. I might be wrong, that's just what I remember. But you know, if it's a veil, it's not like Hukuro needs to see anyway. And look, now she's smiling because in universe, she's kind of charmed by her weapon being an acknowledgement of her blindness instead of ironic this time. I also use the veil in place of a mask, even though in the show, Mayura doesn't really have a mask. I, I don't know, a lot of things about Mayura are kinda wild and she's got colorful skin and everything, really out here looking like an Akuma. I just, I just left Hukuro's skin tone alone. I just let her be like the rest of her team. She just, she's just oh natural. I miss Mayura's concept design where she had this long flowing skirt. I get that it's easier to animate when it's shorter, but damn it, I wanted it long. So Hukuro gets to, gets to live out my dream. She gets the long skirt. 
I pinned her hair up and I colored it lavender to keep it out of the way for all the fighting, but I also made it like circular as sort of an homage to those like little, little beady plumage things that peacocks have. And all that was left now was a name. Well, peacocks are associated with the Greek goddess Hera, but Hera's Roman equivalent is the goddess Juno, and I think Juno in this situation is the cooler name. Parisian peafowl powerful person Juno. Azumi's design is the one that I think I changed the least from the show's canon design on Bunnix. It's also the name that I fudged the most. I pulled all of her hair into the heart-shaped ponytail that she has in her usual civilian design instead of just half of it. I also tinted her hair a little bit to be more red to complement the blue of the outfit. Mostly, I just changed the design on the chest to be heart-shaped, and I extended the design on her gloves and boots farther up her arms and legs. I know I didn't change the look around a lot, but I realized that unlike the first two pictures, I didn't really have a least favorite of this group. I think they all look pretty solid. I'm happy with them. For her superhero name, I wanted to use Lapin. It's the French word for rabbit, but Lapin Blanche and Lapin Bleu weren't very fun. I figured I needed some sort of suffix though, so I just started looking through French words and I was reminded of the name Bijou from Himtaro, which just means jewel. I think Azumi's the kind of bourgeois bitch that would name herself something along the lines of Jeweled Bunny, so I mashed the two words together for Lapijou. It's not really a pun, and I accidentally made it plural because I had the X at the name, but oh well, you know, the piece is done. I had three more shows that I wanted to draw these girls in, but these were taking a really long time to draw, so I cut it down to just one more. Maybe if people want me to do a sequel to this someday, I'll add more shows to the mix. The show we have left is the one I'm the most excited about. It's not my favorite magical girl show of all time. My favorite magical girl show is Princess Tutu, but those designs were one of the ones cut for the aforementioned reasons. But this next show is definitely one of my favorite shows in general. Next is Madoka Magica. So with this series, I had a bit less to go off of as far as general rules of magical girl outfits. Thankfully, they added like over 70 new characters with the Madoka Magica phone game, so I could figure out the do's and don'ts a little bit more. In Madoka Magica, you get to make a wish, and in return for having it granted, you get a soul gem and you have to fight witches. The soul gem almost always matches the girl's eye color, and that usually, usually also decides the girl's overall color scheme. I would say like, 90% of the time, the soul gem matches the girl's eyes and dictates her outfit color scheme. 8% of the time, the soul gem matches the eyes, but the outfit has a totally different color scheme. And then like 2% of the time, the colors do whatever the fuck they want. Lucky me that 10% color discrepancy exists because three out of my five characters have brown eyes, brown hair, that'd be boring. The last observations I made in the Madoka Magica designs were just that sometimes their weapons and outfit called back to the wish that they made in some way. So I gave Katsumi a golden brown color scheme. I let it go with her eye color. I made the outfit have a lot of transparent flowy fabric as an homage to the transparent vest thing that she has in her regular design. Her soul gem is dangling on her chest and it's that same flower thingy shape that I like that I gave her in Magical Girl Sight. And her weapon is a, a good old fashioned Captain America ass shield that's small enough to throw offensively. I figure in universe, Katsumi would have been introduced to the concept because she was caught up in a witch attack before she became a magical girl. So she'd be made aware of how dangerous they were and immediately worry about her friends or about you getting hurt by one. So her wish would be to have the strength to protect them and thus she would get a shield. I realized really quickly how much more complicated these designs were to draw than any of the others I drew because they took like twice or even thrice as long to draw. Lots of regrets, but in the end, these designs were my favorites and the finished illustration was also my favorite. So like little victories. For you, I feel like once she saw Katsumi was a magical girl, she would have been like, I wish I was a magical girl too. But God, what an unfortunate wish that would be. I like to think that QB is merciful enough that he would say, I that wish is unnecessary, wish for something else. And she'd get a redo. So her second wish, she would be like bouncing on her toes, going um, 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 and trying to think of a wish on the spot just for the sake of being a magical girl. And I think she would come up with something like, I wish my daddy was in love with Miss Katsumi so that she could be my real mom. You know, just something really cute and like eight year old innocent, but isn't actually all that cute when you think about real world repercussions, but it's just eight year old innocent, you know, like whatever. So like she'd be like a cute little Cupid theme.
team. I can only imagine how disorderly things would become after that, but you know, it's, it's Cupid. Because of that theme, I gave her the blue soul gem to match her eyes and I put it on her foot. But the rest of her outfit is like white and pink because that's the most Valentine's-y thingy that you could possibly have. I just, I just absolutely, I cannot, I absolutely, I absolutely cannot help myself. You always has to be pink. It's just, it's not an option. I also tried to make this outfit resemble Katsumi's with the dressy fabric over a, a romper thing and the long bow behind the neck just because it's, it's their matching brand. Izumi's wish is probably the hardest to guess. My roommate Rain and even a handful of people on Twitter all at first guessed that her wish would be to, to have a bigger butt. And ha uh, ha ha, hilarious. But here's the thing. A lot of people have accurately guessed that Izumi is a rich bitch. She does in fact come from a family with a lot of money and she has plenty of it herself. But Izumi was very specifically raised that she had to earn her share. She doesn't just have a credit card on her parents' account or a weekly allowance. She busts her flat ass to work at her parents' business so that she can earn her wages and spend her own money on herself. So even though she knows she's in a privileged situation that basically got her a really good job, she works really hard at it and she, she takes a lot of pride in the fact that she, she really does work her, she, she does her best at her job. It just really gets under her skin when people assume that she's lazy or spoiled or entitled because of her family. Plus, Azumi is more than aware that one day if she wants to just buy a nicer figure than she could, so why waste a wish on something that could be surgically paid for? Her wish, I think, would be that people wouldn't judge her based on her parents, and thus she gets an outfit reminiscent of a court judge with a big ol' gavel as her weapon. Her soul gem is brown to match her eyes, and then the rest of her outfit is just gold and white and black because that goes pretty well with the brown, and her soul gem's a little diamond around her neck. Hukuro's wish was super easy. Very first thought, absolutely no regrets. She would wish to have her sight back. So in the Madoka AU, she gets to skip over all of her character development of learning to love herself and her flaws, just eliminate the source of her stress she can see, who cares? A little bit of flavor with her eyesight back, she sees all the silver hair that she's been getting because of how stressed out she was, and she starts dying at just all silver so it looks cute and intentional instead of distressed it's her her way of saying like look i'm i'm washing the worries away or something it's her owning it her outfit was really difficult for me to decide on i spent like an hour trying to figure out something with a skirt but i couldn't really figure out a theme of something that i liked not that it needed a theme to go with the wish but just something to look cohesive I, I couldn't figure anything out until I twisted her bangs and pinned them up to keep them out of her eyes and decided that I should follow that and have twisting fabric everywhere. So I gave her like a belt, her, her sleeves wrap around her wrists a bit, and I abandoned the skirt for a pair of twisty, weirdo flowing pants. For her soul gem, it's a star shape that I put on her glasses. The, the glasses that she has, they look like her kaleidoscope from her regular design and the soul gem is on the, the one lens. It's blue like her eyes. She can still see through it. Don't worry about it. It's it's it's, it's just totally, totally uh, not opaque. Don't, don't even worry about it. For her weapon, it just happened to coincide and match with her bird theme. I didn't plan this. I read online that eagles have the best eyesight ever. So I thought, let's give her like talons. So long ass nails that she can extend and retract as she pleases. And finally, the last, the very last design of this video, the very lastly last, Emmy. Emmy would really be testing QB's patience because like the eight-year-old, Emmy would immediately say, I wish I was a magical fighter. So let's assume again that QB is being merciful again and tells Emmy to make a different wish. Dumb asshole Emmy would just wish to be taller. <laughs> seemed like a fantastic idea in the moment, but then later probably realized that they were being stupid. So stupid. <laughs> Their outfit is kind of Robin Hood-y, just because that's what Emmy thinks is cool. They have a brown soul gem on their hip to match their eyes, green color scheme to go nicely with the brown, and then just has thick boots and gauntlets so they can thrash around and use their body as their weapon. Let's assume the magic comes in giving them like superhuman strength. Pictured here, Emmy is about as tall as Hukuro, and Hukuro is pretty tall, so it's a substantial height boost. But I like to think that civilian Emmy would still be a little bit shorter than Hukuro because it amuses me so greatly to think that Emmy's 
the Emmy's magical girl garb shoes add a couple more inches still to the look. And oh my god, that's that's everyone. Fuck my life, these took so long to draw in shade. But I'm pretty happy with the end result, so I'm glad I did it. Like I said, I had to cut a couple series for time. I had sketched out designs for them in Princess Tutu and Sailor Moon, but that probably would have taken me like three extra days. And I have a lot of stuff to do, so I didn't have the three extra days to spend on one speed paint. If people actually genuinely really want to see me do a sequel, I'll find two more shows and make four more sets of designs for a round two later. But until that time comes, if it ever does, thank you so much for watching. I've got more speed paints where I draw these characters, and I've got more speed paints where I draw literally anything else in, in a playlist over on the screen somewhere. It's in my speed paint playlist. I've also got a Patreon where you can check out my behind the scenes and my works in progress and my early uploads for just $2 a month. However, $10 a month gets you all of that plus your name read at the end of every single video just like this. Thank you so much to Dexter Koch, Kristaru, Cuties, Hat Josuke, Daniel Baton, Kiba Rai, Roxas Prowers, Madu, Fear Thy Raptor, Cat Dagger 2, Isaiah Warren, Rinema, Peach, Drew Warren, Vincent Mirage, Mighty Ninja Lamp, Nyctophilia, Piper PC, Helix, IZ Fan for Life, Steelex, Canaran, Avonpool, Berserker 102, Fox Dragon, Winter Winter Boy 2, Yakumo Soul Queen, Goof, Braybun, Nifty, Buru Berry, Donald Haynes, Brian Galleon, Upchucked, Buddy, Dragoth, Key the Queen, Coda, Brent, Zack Illustrations, Charlie R. Servit, Silent Calling, Weasel Bites, Night Tomorrow, Dracos, Cody Richard, Keith M. Brown, It's Daddy AJ to You, DJ Cat Meow, Carol, Fairy Armor, Kara Green, Bionic, Nikozawa, Rika, Felix, Phantom Kiddo 2, Furryfied Arts, Emily George, Christian Pip, Drew, a Gremlin, Duvong00, Chairman Lee, Blue Horseman 5, Jacob Goodwin, Hachiyubi, It's Katie, Blue Turtlebug, Diddy, Embla, Hazel Grace, Sleepy Omil, John Brooks Eisenman Jr., Peachy Man, Saya Rika, Fields of Starlight, Volpe Bard, Angel Fuentes, Katie to Nothing, Lenrin Virgil, Seb, Sweet Sammy Baby, Mickey On, Patty Melt, Malachu, Matsuo Tanyuki, Flickers, the lovely Kiara, Blast 10 Away, Old Man Dunsparce, Hikahyan, Silvermane 67, Jackie Jellybean, Ditsy, Chiariku, Star Stevenson, Spooky, Tiertic One, Florina Fairy, Yuka, Ace the Thanks, Hannah, Carmen Grace, Dunal Crazy Meg, Wommel's Dwarf Art, Lord, Sound Alchemy, Archibald Anarchy, Dylan MS, Singing Joe, Ninsku, TV Island, Fireflight, Firework Cat 25, Cavalry, Caller 3 Tura, Lilac Witch Kiki, Omar Reyes, Jarn Hunstock, Prenumbro, Andre, Johnny Stars, Dojo Kid, Dead Tines, Troll Killer 2, 254, Stratus Wins, and Sanity, J Bay Mayday, James Samora, Midnight Paradise, East West 333, Zephestus, Flaming Puppeteer, Snow Sergeant, Skill Dragon, Sylvie, Night Mage 14, Zelfus, Sinister Stephanie, Ethan Gardner, Fallen Zippo, Chesa Moon 18, Aswick, Arctic Century, Sylveon Dream, Billy MX, Chris Sigma, Sweet S, Fox, Jeremy Readinger, Shell, Bailey, Antiqua, Dust Munchies, The Orc Cafe, Arwen, Dosco, Nico Starcy, Skull Daiquiri, Michael, Caleb Whitman, Emma Joy, Gus Daniels, Andrew Robinson, Stephen Cooper, Jordan Brooks, Namorphus, Morty, LS, Trash Zuma, Lena Swagmaster, ooh, Daniel Saria, Blue Daniel 16, Kurt Coolman, Red Pandasies, Dan Warren, Cookie Brook, Mercy Mayhem, Coda, Philosophox, Lyratu, Michael McLaughlin, Rasuri On, Hikari You, Honey Bee, Tiny, Swift Chaos, Orion Horizon Blue, and Kabuki. And extra special thanks to you, my $100 patrons, who are just the kindest ever people. And they join me for Discord game nights, which are so much fun. We've got Eggs Machina, who I prefer to call Mike Stiffer. Momo Hart, who confirmed with me that Andy is a pussy at taking shots. Justin Inks, who, poor soul, got astral ejected out of all of our TKO games. Michelangelo, who managed to figure out Discord in my absence, I am so sorry. Lily Pia, who blessed us with Froklin Frog. <laughs> Jordan Alexander Sanchez, this dude's got a different name everywhere. I swear to God, he's so hard to keep track of. I know him as shenanigans, but one of his usernames is Fluffy Hobo Ninja. What's the story there? Ian Kakato, who is a filthy, filthy, disgusting Chloe Bourgeois hater. Force Raider, who should feed me a snack, please. And Raiden, who's on deployment right now. I hope you're safe, I miss you. We've also got Sky, Stupid Genius, The Melted House, Aaron Boehm, Cayenne Peppers, Kara Stark Strange, Even Karaz, and Ginger Emu. Just so you all know, the next uh, $100 patron game nights are going to be on the 15th this month, the 15th, and the 28th. I believe those are both the days. Yes, the 15th and the 28th. You guys should totally show up for those. They're a whole bunch of fun. And other than that, I'm going to be traveling for the rest of this month. That's exciting. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Until next time, bye!